Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you back to the deep south of New Zealand, to the incredible city of Invercargill. Today we have more for you from the Bill Richardson transport world in this week's Classic Restos. <laughs> The Bill Richardson Transport World. It's no stranger to classic restos. I'm proud to be able to say that I've been here now quite a few times. And why have I returned this time, you may be thinking. Well, the reason for that is because this place never stops changing. More than 50 years ago, the astounding collection that would one day become Bill Richardson Transport World was started by the man himself. Bill Richardson was just six years old when his lifelong love of everything trucking began. Sitting in the cab of Snowy Kid's 1949 Ford 5-tonner, young Bill's imagination was fuelled and that moment began a fascination for trucks that endured through one of the most dynamic periods in New Zealand's transport history. Bill was determined to acquire his grandfather's truck so that he could restore it. And in 1967, Bill found it. That truck attributed to what became a collection of vintage trucks comprising the rare, the unique, the interesting, and either way, Bill loved them all. Trucks were not just work for Bill. He made them his hobby as well. H.W. Richardson was founded by Bill and still proudly endures today. Classic American trucks from the 1930s were his favourite as he remembered them fondly as a child. Bill soon gained quite the name for himself in vintage truck collector circles and he quickly became the go-to man to contact if a classic truck needed a new home. Bill's collection expanded to include trucks of almost every make and model. It was one man's passion that started it all. What began in a back shed has been transformed into something truly spectacular. Bill poured decades of passion into restoring trucks and he took great pride in showing people his collection as it grew in numbers and models. In late 2015, Bill Richardson Transport World, the largest private automotive museum of its type in the world, was opened to the public. Bill said, one day I hope somebody cares enough to carry it on. After Bill's sudden death in 2005, his daughter Jocelyn O'Donnell took on responsibility not just for Bill's transport company, HWR, but for caring for her father's beloved collection of vintage trucks. Bill's collection has evolved into an incredible tribute of wheel-related treasures beloved by his wider family. Bill's family has fulfilled his wish to carry on his love of everything wheels, infusing his astounding collection of classic trucks with their own automotive interests to create a true world-class experience. The Bill Richardson Transport World is a truly heartwarming personal experience, celebrating not just the history of classic vehicles, but an ever-evolving family legacy as well. I've been pretty fully invested in transport world for at least the last 10 years now. Um, of course, most of that time my children were at home and watching me live and breathe it. <laughs> and um, as the years have gone by, uh, they've purchased a few vehicles where their passion sits. So our older son Harrison's into Nissan GTRs and Citroens. 
and um, our second son Cameron is into minis, so there's quite a few minis in here now. They love it and hopefully uh, that legacy will continue on. Dad's passion really sat with trucks, it was all about trucks. Um, started off with 30s and 40s American trucks and then a friend of his talked him into collecting um, English trucks of the same era. I don't know that Dad ever thought about opening it to the public. Um, he used to show through about five or six thousand people a year himself. Um, so we knew there was a demand there for, for the product. Um, I don't know what he would think if he saw it today. I hope that he would be really happy with the way it looks. Um, but we decided to open it to the public because Invercargill didn't have any commissionable tourism products. So would he have ever got to that next step? I'm not sure. I don't know. At the time of his death, there was about 150 trucks in here, maybe 200 petrol bowsers. Um, and it has diversified a lot over the years as the next generations have come through as well. So um, I have had people say, you need to change the name. It's not just all transport related now. There's all sorts of different collections in here. It's more like an emporium, but I'll never change the name. With me now, workshop manager. How are you, Darren? I'm oh, good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Great, mate, great. Beautiful place. I know it's the, uh, it might sound like an old line, but you wouldn't get tired of coming to work here, I would imagine. No, you certainly don't. It's a very special place and yeah. um, it's a privilege to work here. Absolutely. Now, Darren, this episode is touching more on the the family side uh, of Bill Richardson uh, and Jocelyn O'Donnell, uh, the, the daughter of, of the late Bill. And um, the place has expanded so much over the years. It was Bill's dream. Uh, he wanted a museum, if he could only see it now. Hopefully he can. Well, yeah, hopefully he can. It, it has changed a lot since... 2005, um, a lot of additions, uh, generational museum really, like it's it's more about um, you know Scott and Joss's interest and, and, and their kids and uh, what they're interested in and yes. got, got their own little collections going on, yeah. yeah, yep. And it's a credit to you as well with the maintenance, uh, the, the building, the restoration of, uh, of vehicles and being a mechanic as well, um, well obviously it's a full time job, you'd always have something to do here. You never run out of work here. I mean, there's plenty of restoration still to do. Um, there's always maintenance. Um, never run out of work. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. In 2024, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2024 Detroit tour with Fletch. Email fletchtours at mail.com. Now, apart from primarily a truck museum, there's a lot more here than that. Uh, there's shed after shed, and you can walk for hours. Now, just to give you an idea, this uh, smaller section in here is, uh, well, really the, the Volkswagen section. It's the combi section. Uh, so there's something here for everybody when you visit Transport World. Now, behind us, a 1975 combi imported from the UK. It's got a nice story. Do you want to share that with us, Darren? Yep. Well, um um, Scott and Joss done their an OE um, in Europe uh, in an orange and combi. 
74, 75 model. I travelled around Europe in a Westphalia and I absolutely hated it. Um, it was temperamental. Uh, the first day that we went travelling and it broke down, the fan bell broke on the motorway. Apparently Joss couldn't wait to get out of the thing. The problems kind of continued. I was claustrophobic and so I couldn't wait to see the back end of it. So we sold it to buy the engagement rings. So, um, and I was like, see you later. Evidently she started collecting them anyway. So Scott thinks it's a huge joke that I now collect combis. Joss wanted to find one the same. I had a hankering to try and find one that was very similar to the one we sold. Which took some finding, it had to be, a, had to be orange, had to be a 74, 75 model and had to have the orange tartan interior. The difference being is that I don't have to live in that one, you know, whereas I was claustrophobic in the other one, so. Took some finding but we found this one, it's, it's unrestored, it's done 75,000 Ks. It's in such beautiful condition, it's an absolute minter and it's even got the same upholstery and everything, so it's very original. Darren, how cool is this? The latest acquisition, the latest restoration that you've just completed, a 1959 Volkswagen ambulance. Well done on this one. Thank you, thank you. Um, so it was purchased in 2019, uh, not much ambulance left about it. Uh, the glass cab divider was the only thing left in it, um, so it's been... Um, it's been quite a difficult job, actually, yeah, yeah. For sourcing all the correct stuff. So, so it tested you? It did. Yeah. It did. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Always an ambulance? Yes, it's an original Southland Hospital wow. ambulance from 1959. Wow. They had a fleet of six yeah. Volkswagens. They were the, the only hospital board in New Zealand to run the Volkswagens. Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe there was one in the North Island, but it was like a health shuttle type yeah, yeah. thing. Um, so it's all genuine factory ambulance. So where was it? Just what, parked up in a, in a shed somewhere or? Well, a chap had partly restored it. Um, I think he was in Hastings. Um, he was down here with it in 2010 on a, on a combi tour. They came through the museum, the group of people that on the tour. Um, Joss seen it, said to him, if you ever want to part with it, call me. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, he passed away and it came up on Trade Me and Joss was very excited to um, to purchase it. Hmm. It sounds like Joss has been on a mission. Her, her mission is to try and round up every last combi that's left in the South Island. Well, she's got maybe the North as well. Yeah, she's got a very, a very good collection, actually. It's uh, wonderful. It's so diverse, too. I love it. You know, camper van, ambulance. We've got a, a burgundy burgundy red one up there we're just about to do in a moment. Well, this is a credit to uh, to you. And when I say team, uh, how many people work with you here, Darren? Uh, four of us, in the rest, five in the restoration team, actually. Mm -hmm. Yep, all up. Um, so you do everything, uh, panel, paint as well? We do panel, paint, sheet metal, um, mechanical, um, upholstery would be the only thing we, we send out. Yeah, sure. um, it's a real specialist field, that isn't it? Well, it is. You got to get that right. Yep, yeah. yep. I mean, there's three things you got to get right, and it's yeah. panel, paint, upholstery, because yeah. that's what people see. Chrome, the other things got to be right. Yeah. Darren, how cool is this? The burgundy red, uh, August 1965 camper, and uh, we have this Ranger camp trailer behind. That's rare. It is very rare. Uh, they only produced uh, 200 of the Ranger campers between 1954 and 1956. So I can tell it's from the United States, isn't it? Absolutely. It's even got Ford tail lights. Yeah, there yep. you go. There you go. What a dead giveaway up there. The, how cool is that? Uh, tail lights up there and just the shape of this thing. It's nice inside. Uh, it's roomy. Um, it looks great behind the combi. Even the uh, the alloy embellishment there over the wheel covers just the, the the finish of this van it just looks so nice um so what is the story of archie up front i know that's obviously uh another camper van very dear to joss's heart yes this was the uh first combi of joss's collection i never really loved vehicles until i bought my first combi van she bought it in 2008 and um, seems to have started something. <laughs> hmm. Well, when she starts something, she does everything exceptionally well. Absolutely, yep. 
Um, it's got a very good collection of combis. Um, I think there's about a dozen in the collection. They're not all here. Um, some still need restored. But um, yeah, it's an it's a evolving collection. Dad had a hankering to find his grandfather's truck. Uh, it was a 1933 International and he ended up finding it around the corner from our family home and paid about £10 or something like that for it. He never actually, that was in 1967, uh, he never restored that vehicle because he and Mum went to Christchurch on a trip and as they were driving home from Christchurch, Mum said, isn't that the same sort of truck that you've just bought as your grandfather's? And so Dad stopped the, the car and went and talked to the gentleman and bought it on the spot and ended up driving it home. And it only needed one coat of paint, so he never restored the original. Um, it was so close though, it was only one engine number away from his grandfather's one. So um, I've now put the original in Dad's old workshop. The transport world, uh, representing Bill Richardson's collection, is astounding and up there as world class. There wouldn't be many parts of the world that you would go to to find a better museum. Again, the way that the museum's laid out the way that it presents and the history behind the museum is amazing. And of course that family legacy of the Richardson family in itself is something very, very special. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. In 2024, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2024 Detroit tour with Fletch. Email fletchtours at mail.com. Classics is what Shannon's does best. There's also insurance for laid up vehicles, perhaps you're halfway through your restoration. There's also insurance for your tools and for your memorabilia. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call on 134646 or for more information visit shannons.com.au. Regarding the fastest Indian movie, um, it was filmed just around the corner from Transport World and uh, Dad, we had actually provided quite a lot of the memorabilia for the movie. So Dad was up there one day cruising around watching some of the filming and they needed a neighbour. So they pulled him into the set and they tried to get him to take off his watch, um, which he had worn. He had the same watch which he wore halfway up his arm, almost it had an elastic band. And um, they tried to get him to take it off, but he refused to take it off because he insisted that it was the right era for the movie. So then he had to be the neighbour. He was the neighbour that said, see you later, Bird. So sadly, Dad passed away before the movie was actually released, but they did give us the clip for his funeral, which was a little bit eerie because he was sort of saying, see you later. So... But yeah, pretty special that he ended up being in a blockbuster movie. Darren, anyone that says they've been here for an hour or two, well, to me, they've just seen a bit. Anyone that spends a full day has seen some. You, you, could, actually, you could actually spread this over a couple of days, you checking could. all this out. Absolutely, you could. Um, an hour, you're not even scratching the surface. If you're, if you're into what's here, 
you could easily spend a day, day and a half, even two days, yeah. to, to see pretty much everything. It's like a politician's speech. It just keeps going and going and going. You literally walk through one archway or a door and you think you're near done. And then here's another room or another part of the shed. It is just incredible uh, what has been accumulated and collected and put into transport world. It's, it's amazing. When you come and visit us in, in Cargill, uh, please allow plenty of time because it's 15,000 square metres at Transport World. It's a whole city block. Um, you're walking up through the museum some days, you'll see people enter the next shed and they'll go, does it ever end, you know? And mm. often people get down where we are now and you say, well, actually, this is the end of it, you know? But they wonder if it's ever gonna stop. Darren, it's the old story, no matter how much we film, no matter how much time we spend here, you're never going to get everything under, well, it's not the one roof, it's multiple roofs, the one premises, like you just mentioned, a city block. <laughs> yep, yep. There's multiple buildings. Um, yeah, as I say, city block. Um, it it's, takes time to look at it all. So, Darren, I want to thank you again for taking us around and uh, being an integral part of putting this special episode together for Transport World here in Invercargill. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Fletch. The Bill Richardson Transport World will leave you with the hankering to return. The Turbo Pass can give you those return options to visit both Transport World and the classic motorcycle mecca. The Grill Cafe keeps you warm in winter and serves restaurant quality foods in a themed environment while you receive nothing less than from Transport World. You can stay at the Lodges, state-of-the-art luxury boutique apartments across the road from Transport World and walk to breakfast. Of course, Invercargill is home of Burt Munro and the filming location of the world's fastest Indian movie. Areti Beach, just south of town, is a must-see, the very location where Burt Munro used to test his bikes in the 1950s and 60s and again a filming location for the movie and the weather here keeps things more than interesting. A drive then around to the seaside village of Bluff will have you at a most southern point of New Zealand, with the exception of Stewart Island, 35 kilometres away. The legendary yellow signpost will show you countries and their distances to give some perspective of where you are. On top of Bluff Mountain, a one kilometre high, 360 degree view awaits you. The cruise ships enter here and the Richardson Transport World and Motorcycle Mecca are on the list for the tourists. The John Britton exhibition is here, along with the George Begg Bunker and Festival. Invercargill in the deep south of New Zealand is a special place. You might even feel a connection here. I know I do. The southern hospitality encompasses a welcoming that makes you want to stay. The food is fresh, the air is clean, there is just so much to do or do as little as you choose. Home to around 50,000 people, in many ways the music stopped on them. They have their own little paradise here. In just a little over two hours, slightly northwest to Queenstown, you will love taking State Highway 6 as one of the most popular and picturesque roads to travel, taking in some of New Zealand's finest farming lands and eventually, as the highway snakes around, the breathtaking views of Lake Wakatipu will have you stopping along the way to keep your cameras warm. Classic Restos is just some. You need to complete the rest. Visit Invercargill, check social pages for websites and contacts. I'm very proud of the association with Classic Restos and the uh, Bill Richardson Transport World as well to uh, keep you up to date with the, the happenings of what's going on with the museum and of course uh, new introductions as well like the motorcycle mecca and what have you. They've got some other strings uh, in their bow as well that you'll see in the near future down the track on Classic Restos as well. Invercargill, it's a special place and uh, it's a special place in my heart for Invercargill here in the deep south and I think that that will always remain. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, thanks for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.